After five days of gusting chilly winds, it is a much different day on this semifinal Saturday at Bandon Dunes, hosting this 120th U.S. Amateur Championship for the very first time. Winds not near as strong. Temperatures have warmed up nicely as the final four teed off just a little while ago. This was Tyler Strafacci of Georgia Tech for birdie, already one up over Amon Gupta of Oklahoma State. Looking to increase the lead, so a beautiful putt for Strafacci at this 459-yard par four. Just Turn, taking baby. right up the center of the green. Turn and get in so landed right on the top of that crest. He's got it on the same level with the flag. Quality contact, but a pull draw. This may be up in the dunes. Yeah, there's trouble left. Wow. Actually, his lie will be okay. Got a little left there for par. Mentioned trying to win his family's second USGA championship, his grandfather. Frank won the 1935 Pub Lynx. So much history in that family. His dad a good golfer. His mom played golf for the University of Florida. Looking for a baby draw on a fantastic line. Wow, didn't seem like he Beautiful. was thrilled with it. Yeah, his reaction after he hit it was not very good. It somewhat felt like it was it looked like he maybe had pulled it left, but. Very high, just a little right of it. There we go, solid shot. Strapacci in there, much closer for birdie. Not a good putt for Gupta, but he's in danger of going four down and maybe losing three holes in a row. Another year at Georgia Tech. That one gets away, so Gupta dodges that one. But it's all turning out pretty well because uh, he could end up uh, becoming another U.S. Amateur champion, Burko, for Georgia Tech. You're right. Right at it. Coach likes it. Boy, that took a big first bounce. Very nice contact. Asking for it to sit down. This guy's like the Hideki Matsuyama of amateur <laughs> golf. You look, don't look at his finish to judge where this ball's headed. But he's gotten a good sense of the pace from Amin Gupta. Didn't really take advantage of it. Well, Gupta has a chance to stay three down has got to make this putt or be in a deeper hole. Okay, survives it. Stays three down to Strafaci. As they head up to the eighth. Good looking line, just a little left of it. Oh, took it right at it, backed it up, Bones. And there's an example of what you're talking about, the aggressive play, giving him a much closer you're birdie attempt right coming up. Strafacci still has a par attempt to tie it. Hmm. So Gupta wins his first hole, now just two down. So Strafacci has lost that big time momentum. Well, I have to be honest and say I'm very surprised he's putting this. And this is going to get away from a little bit speed wise. I, that, to me, that was just a slam dunk chip back into the wind off a great line. Heart to heart with his uh, coach, Alan Bratton, who's on the bag last fall. And Bratton and the couple of the other assistants basically said, Amon, you got to work a little harder. Gave him a kick in the butt, and Amon said, I needed it. And he has turned it around, especially here this week. That was a good looking putt. Wow, he's had a bunch of great looking putts finishing all around the hole. problem with that so got a green side in two 
Down and two for Birdie, and Strafacci's lead is back to three up at the turn. Well, this looks pretty good from here. Let's see if he gets a kick. Lands it up on top, now rolls down. That's probably going to roll <laughs> down through the green, but maybe not. No, it stays up on top. That's a wonderful shot. And, you know, he knows he had a good one, but he has no idea how close it is. Mr. Faji has 25 feet for eagle. Yeah, that's pretty good. Lands it right on the ridge, feeds it down to the level where this hole is located. But we'll still have the better part of eight or nine feet left. Got to block it all out and get the job done. A couple of feet, and uh, I'm sure Amon's going to want to see that. No, he doesn't. Should be moving a decent bit to his right. I just Boy. needed a little more pace. Oop to four down now to Strafacci, who's got his biggest lead through 10. Let's see if he can generate some spin. It's running out a little bit more than he wants, and that's just the thing we've seen all week. It's really hard to get your ball to grab on these greens. Yeah, and it looked like Amon Gupta's ball is maybe on a little bit of an upslope, which really could help him here. A lot of air underneath that. Oh, that was a pretty cool shot, the yeah. way he sliced it. That was well done. There's an example of that wedge game that his coach, Alan Bratton, was talking about. Gupta's got to make something happen right now. Of course, rolling this in would erase it. And still not in. A little bit inside Gupta's putt upcoming. Just uncharacteristic. He's been so solid with that putter all week. So Strabacci scratches out a tough bogey on a tough hole. Looking on the lower right, you've got Osborne with his attempt here, second shot at the par four. Okay, so Gupta ties the hole, but he stays four down. Gonna try and hit a little knockdown shot. He's been in between clubs. Yeah, just a little three quarter, one just right of the hole. Trying to use as much of the green as he could, and that's well played given his status in the match. Land this up on the green, take the variables out, give himself as good a chance as he can to hold this. Watch it go by. You could hear Alan Brown say, watch it go by. Look at the break it has. Oh, boy. Well, not a great effort there. All right. But he is running out of holes in real estate here. Four down with six to play. Clears the mogul. Jumps up on the mogul to get a good view of it, Bones. Let's see if it has just enough momentum to get to the putting surface, and boy, if it stays there. Oh, oh my man. goodness, hang on. I don't see how it stays oh, there. Oh my gosh. It just needed a few more feet. That was a yard from tremendous, and now he's really got his hands full, but that's golf. And that's golf here at Bandon. Yeah, it's gonna funnel way down. Picks up speed and just rifles away from the stick. Yeah, I would love to just put this in the middle of the green. It didn't sound like it was hit very solidly. Yeah, this is certainly to the left. He's looking for a big bounce here. The thing he does have going for him from over there is that if the ball doesn't release down the green, he's got a great angle to get the ball up and down as opposed to Gupta. Yeah, big time advantage bones for him. One bounce. Beautiful shot. Boy, that's a that's 10 out of 10. It's a little go, bit young like, man. A little bit like your guy, Phil. Pretty good hands there, Bones. Yeah, that was nice. The first five days. And there's a little downslope. Begins right there. That will help get it 
somewhere there, but it's going to come up short again. Did you ever think that Gupta was going to be closer in than Strafacci here for not, birdie? Not after those second shots. Birdie, Strafacci. Gupta's in there closer. But moving from his left to right. Mm. How about this? Gupta has a chance here. So world class up and down from Mr. Gupta. Impeccable bones. Just when you thought that Strafacci had a good chance to take a five up lead. Trying to fly it all the way back to this whole location. It came out very heavy, looking to trundle now, and this looks fantastic. Yeah, that's a good shot considering the lie that he had. Back at 14, Strafacci to win the hole and push the lead even further? No. Dan, he has left a lot of 35-footers quite a bit short today. Well done. Nicely done. Boy, how about those last two up and downs, Justin? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Pretty sporty. Easy to keep that three-up lead. Okay, so Strafacci moving closer and closer to becoming the first finalist in tomorrow's 36-hole championship match. So that's swirling around on their heads. This for double. A triple on this hole today. He's got to keep telling himself. Yeah, bud. But in the end here, a bogey would have won him the match, Justin. Yeah, it was a big opportunity after Alman Gupta hit it over Strafaci the green. Six, Gupta, Two down Strafaci. with three to play is Gupta. Go. Go. Huge swing wow. by Gupta, and what a shot. What a shot wow. by Gupta. That was special there. Gets a thumbs up from Strafaci. That was so good. People out here watching. Back down the hill. He's looked tentative on the greens here on this back nine. And that was a little tentative. Good call, there. Justin. Tentative again. An amazing run of holes for Aman Gupta of Oklahoma State. Now one down as they head to the 17th. Tell you what, when you give a gritty player like Amon Gupta a little daylight. And this fairway playing way bigger without the 30 mile an hour left to right wind these guys have had on the previous days of this championship. Gupta going with a long iron, playing right at the fairway bunker. Let's see if it ends up short of it. And that looks pretty good, good from shot. here, I think. Yeah, that's in good shape. Bashi one up at 17, answering the nice drive by Gupta. Yeah, now he needs to regroup and get aggressive again. This going down the left side of the fairway is L. That needs to slow down. Headed for that little pot oh. bunker. Left stay of the right. flag. Stay right. Okay, gets it up on the proper level there. A little bit of a tug, but that's okay. Especially where Strafacci is. Fatted it out of there. But that's as good as a layup from that spot. He's certainly got a chance to save four. We saw Gary Woodland do it with great success on the 71st hole of last year's U.S. Open. At the 17th. Sounded thin, I think. Maybe not. All in all, that is not a bad shot at all. Maybe a groove low, but he's certainly got that putt for par. And a par still may be good enough. 
and keep a one-up lead to the 18th. We've seen him come up short on a number of these putts. It's time to take a deep breath. Oh, that never had a chance. And Gupta has won four of the last five holes. Tied up going to 18, where Strafacci has been the last two matches and has seen a lot of drama with his dad there. Over cutting to the right, heading towards those bunkers that Justin just talked about. Will it get there? It appeared to possibly crawl into some deep rough just short of it, but... It's in the bunker. Well, if Amangupta can reach it, certainly Ty Strafaci can. So a big opening here if he can hit a good drive. With a second. Got out of trouble. Pull hook here, guys. Very poor tee shot. Oh, man. What must be swirling in the head of Tyler Strafacci with a second? Got out of trouble. Pull hook here, guys. Very poor tee shot. Oh, man. What must be swirling in the head of Tyler Strafacci? Trying to hold off Gupta. There's a little help getting a ball back the hole if he is able to hit it past with some spin. It will come back to this hole location. Oh. oh. Was third to this par five. This is just tough to watch after seeing what he's done the last five holes. Quite heavy here, as you might imagine, after those last two, leaving himself well short of the green. Boy, you just, that's the first thing you have to do is make sure you're getting it over the lip. You're not going for the green. You're just trying to lay it up. Picked it off the turf on a good line just left of the flag. Yeah, keeps it in that depression. That little backstop. A sneak up on it and make good contact. Just something exactly like that. That's all he needed. Lies three, Gupta lies five, and Strafacci is getting closer to having a chance to put his own name on that USGA museum. Just walked over to Bratton to double check with him what exactly Gupta lies on this green. It is an emotional week, and the hat is off by Gupta, and that makes it official. Tyler Strafacci has himself a berth in the championship match tomorrow. So the second semifinal match, this was an eagle opportunity just earlier for Ollie Osborne of SMU taking on Matthew Sharpstein. They both exchanged a couple of pars on the first two holes. So the match is tied. So just that left for a birdie for Osborne. And so now Matthew Sharpstein, 21-year-old Charlotte 49er for birdie with Osborne up there close. Knocks it right in. So a nice long-range birdie for Sharpstein. And so now Ollie with a chance for his birdie to keep the match tied as he looks for the Mustangs' fifth U.S. Amateur Championship title, the last hold in by Bryson DeChambeau five years ago. He does have a good chance to, you know, try and get something up on the front edge of the green.
big hack at it. Come out just a touch left. Just finds the front bunker. This looks so, tough too. Yeah, this is what I mentioned. He, he's got stance issues and he's got club path issues, so. Oh, did he just play a nice creative shot? It's gotta get down though, I believe. Oh, this is gonna be a heck of a shot. It is a little hot coming through. Not much though, that is remarkable from where he was. And it'll feed down off the well, green into the penalty area. Now. Ooh, and that may have gone into a really nasty lie. From right to left and then back up the hill just a bit. Yeah, just needed a touch more pace and that might have gone in. For par to win the hole. They have tied the first three holes. And a little left. And he gave it to him. So they have uh, tied the first four. Close for six weeks because of COVID. And at the fifth, Sharpstein off the tee. And this going up the right side of the fairway. Should be just fine, short of the dunes. Well, there's Matthew Sharpstein, who has an official nearby, him and his dad, and they're talking about something, and as he was addressing this ball, it appeared to move just a little bit, and we bring in Craig Winter, our rules expert from the USJ, to add some explanation to this. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, this uh, this rule, uh, if the player is the cause of the movement, that ball will need to be replaced in a one-stroke penalty. Uh, you see Mike Bailey there, the referee. He's actually called for a rover just to be sure, again, we get this one right. Uh, it looked just from that highlight like that ball did, in fact, move. And, uh, well, unfortunately, this will be a replaced ball and, and likely a one-stroke penalty here added to, to Matthew's score. Back into his backswing, but... You heard Daniela Lendl, who is the daughter of Yvonne Lendl, did a nice job with a the ruling there, saying that we, you know, it was pretty obvious that uh, that's what caused it, your address on the ball, subsequent move back. So the third on the way. Wow. <laughs> that what, shot had nearly hold it out. What a third shot it was. Almost went in the hole. How about getting a par out of this in the end, huh? It's the front of this whole location. All right, Osborne on the way with his second from 130. Boy, you can just still hear how firm those greens are. Good shot by Ollie Osborne. And Justin, this would give him a mini boost of momentum to fight you off a penalty shot to tie a hole. Oh, absolutely. You'd almost look at this like winning a hole for his confidence. Important putt here. No, just pulled it just a little bit. So Osborne gets the first winning hole. Five, Osborne four, Osborne is one up. His first winning hole. Yeah, and this guy is known as a great ball striker. That's deep, way oh, deep. Oh boy. Just flew the putting surface. It's a seven iron well struck. Just right of the hole. Yeah, good play. Just landing it in the middle of the green. Gonna try and take advantage. And over onto the green. Trying to hit a little hooky wedge to get it turning up the hill, and that's pretty good from there. That was good technique. Very nice. Just uh, ran out just a bit. Mother to watch his son win this championship. And how about that putt? That looked good too, but. Sharpstein wins his first hole and ties it up. Sharpstein three, Osborne four, the match is tied. Yeah, I would love to get this in the right half of the fairway. Give himself a little better angle to this back left hole location. Even though this fairway is about 100 yards wide, he's missed it out to the right, but looks to be sitting okay. It's coming in a little low. Now well, it landed hot on the green. It's gonna run up onto the slope and it's gonna catch enough rough to where it doesn't come back and that's in a very awkward spot. Horn's now ready. Yeah, great opportunity here. 
going with just a sand wedge. And oh, oh my goodness. gosh, he flew another green. And this back into the dune above the green. Looks like a pretty bad lie there as well. Huge mistake. Her shot, try and blast it. Exactly what he's done. Not very effectively, but boy, a wasted opportunity. Essential guess in this pandemic. So his dad on the bag, you can have one other person walking with a match. That is a beautiful putt, and suddenly Sharpstein has turned around Ali Osborne's Three, four, momentum Osborne, two in a row five, and five, grabs his first lead. He's certainly got the length, not maybe to reach this green under these conditions, but he can really move it off the tee. Yeah, he's got that smooth power. Reminds me a lot of you, Noda. <laughs> no, I was short and choppy and looked like I was working too hard. Yeah, sounded heavy. Hmm. See the ball over there, but it's amid the fescue there, and yeah. that is going to be a difficult yeah. angle. Yeah, great angle here. Doesn't have to contend with the slope there to the right. And a good shot with Matthew Sharpstein in serious trouble there, short and right of the green. Yes. But uh, straight up the hill, 10, 12 feet, should be able to get this in cozy. Why not roll it in for a birdie? Ali Osborne ties it up. Sharpstein. Chance to tie him back at the ninth, second for Sharpstein. Yeah, from 278. Looks like he's hung this out to the right. Get it, yeah, gets off the dune, out of the rough, onto the front part of the green. That's going to leave a pretty challenging two putt. Now Osborne, Nota. He's looking at 239 front off a nice uphill lie. He can fly this a little bit deeper into the green because he's going to be putting this high up in the air, but has, has come down to the left. Should come down that slope a little closer to the green like we saw Strafacci earlier. Yeah, it's an awkward putt too because he's going up a big slope and then actually green goes away from him in the last 20 feet. So really hard to judge the speed perfectly. And they got hopping quick off that putter. Yeah, just mm. barely made it to the top of the ridge. So. Interesting play here, Justin. Opting for the putter, I think players that had a lot of confidence in their short game when it might have taken a shorter club out. But just shows you there's more than one way to get it done around these greens. Big yeah. advantage for Osborne. All right, big putt here going downhill, breaking to his left. Never got it high enough. It's and, still uh, not in. Yeah. That okay, Sharpstein still his turn over at 9 4 par. And that is going to end it. Four putt bogey for Sharpstein, and he is running hot. 20 miles an hour club head speed. Doesn't look like he's working at all. This is a well struck shot. Yeah, just 300 yards to the front edge, and he flew it about 298 right into the upslope, but that's a great position to play from. It's, uh, he can still get it on this green, though, depending on where it lands. Yeah. <laughs> they look pretty speedy to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're all speedy out here, Dan. Oh, over Land, the hump. Lands into the upslope. It'll trundle here down there just is it short. Get up? Nope, not quite enough on it. Didn't have enough club head speed. Hole, but he stays four down and loses a golden opportunity to get to three down. Second on the way for Osborne at the 10th. Much easier read being on that portion of the green, putting more up the slope. If he can get it out high enough. Yeah, just rattled it in. That was a confident stroke after a four putt on the previous hole. Dad loved it. Osborne and Sharpstein exchange birdies. Osborne three. Osborne is one up. Above the bunker. Yeah, ideally would love to hit this about 10 or 15 feet left of this flag. Looks like that's the direction he's headed. Yeah, and a good shot there. Got to fly it all the way back. That's just uh, not a good putt. I don't know if he read it wrong, didn't hit it. That, that putt just didn't have enough pace on it. Good start, but it 
the end of the match, when you can have the momentum in the back nine, that's when matches are really won or lost. Okay, that should be good for the par for Ollie, but Sharpstein has some work left here to stay one down. Against Tiger, and he inevitably went, went on to win. Uh, and that's going to be putt. a cost, costly three putt for Sharpstein, Justin. Sharpstein yeah, that five, neither of those two four, putts looked four, like they had four, enough four, speed two, or really five. the confidence to go in. So we had a four putt bogey at nine, a three putt bogey at 11. Working out a two-up leader for Sharpstein. Yeah, he's kind of in control of this match right now. Let's see if he can hit a good one here and put some more pressure on. And he does. Boy, he even spins it back, but that's in good shape. Beautiful tee shot. Yeah, needs to get something going. That's a good response. But can he put a good roll on it? Is that his opponent's going to make it? So it'd be nice to give this one a good run. Just lack the pace, really. Be a little defensive. And we'll give Sharpstein an excellent chance to be one down. There we go. That might get him going. Sharpstein two, Osborne three. Osborne is one up. Just about 50 feet away from those beautiful waves. Sharpstein trying to get too much out of it. Yeah, just over 160 to the front, and he just going right after this right now. It's drawing back toward the middle of the green. Beautiful shot, safely on. Putting more pressure on Sharpstein. Thanks, Took a quick glance at where his opponent Ali Osborne's putt was, so he knows that he's gonna have his hands full getting that down in two, so if he can get this inside 10 feet, would be a great shot. Yeah, he doesn't really have the advantage of using the slope on the green. The green pretty flat. He's a little further into it, so he's gonna need to land this just short of the putting surface. Skip it up. Oh, he hit this way too hard. Yeah, flew it all the way to the hole. So difficult from down there when you're that far below the surface of the green. Man, oh, he's got it. What great stroke right in the middle. And he gets that breathing room again, being two up after losing the 12th. Going with the driver. That bunker should not be in play, and this just to the left of it. And that's in great shape there. He has pounded that down there. He'll just be able to hit a little pitch shot. He's taking the 60, just going to try and muscle it all the way back there, get it to stop at the right distance. Nope. Trying to get it skipped. There's a little ridge there that it didn't make it over, and that's a big mistake. Yeah. He's taking the 60, just going to try and muscle it all the way back there, get it to stop at the right distance. Trying to get it skipped. There's a little ridge there that it didn't make it over, and that's a big mistake. Yeah. Nice shot similar to this, maybe just a, a tad bit shorter at eight. Kind of mid-range flighted wedge. See if he can dial up the right yardage here. Yeah, beautiful. Lands it just on the downslope there that kind of guards his back hole location, puts enough spin on it. Really well done. Birdie to take a three-up commanding lead over Sharpstein. Doesn't do much, move a little bit to his left. And he's just building confidence every hole now as he's trying to put away Four, another three, U.S. Amateur four, title for Osborne, SMU. If anywhere, miss it to the left. Well, he's hung this out a little bit right. It's gonna need to get up and get a good bounce. Now flies it on the back of the green. Easy, easy. Goodness. He's lost this right. This might end up short in the bunker. There's a little grassy pot area before that bunker that Strafacci ended up coasting down. And that is just short of that deepest bunker on the course. Yeah, that's not bad there. Osborne in the meantime playing his third after taking the unplayable. Not able to see the flag stick at all. 
And that will head down the other side. So a four very unlikely from there. Tell you, this par three is just killing these four semifinalists. You over at 15. Just a huge opportunity for him to get right back in this match. Get down, ball. Oh, get down, indeed. Look at this. That is colossal. My gosh. Wow. I mean, around these greens. He's won three out of the last four holes, but Sharpstein can try to turn it around here. That's a nice play right there. Wow, beautiful play. The grass was affecting his backswing. Able to block that out of his mind. Costly miss. Osborne was probably thinking, no way am I going to be able to pull off a tie on this hole when I had to take an unplayable and stretch it back on the other side of the course. He's kind of muttering to himself as if, I don't know how I escaped that. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is right at the right edge of the green. It's going to be dicey. Now with your opponent in bad shape and three down, you do that. Yeah, that looks to be in the penalty area. Has to win the hole outright to extend it. Sounded thin. Yeah, he bladed it. Yeah. It was a pretty tight, thin lie. Just didn't get the club underneath the ball. That's unfortunate. Second for Osborne at 16. Sharpstein did end up playing up and on the green. Very nice shot inside eight feet. Osborne safely on. Yep, and we're moving closer to this one becoming official. Well, just three putts from this distance for Osborne to move on to the 36 hole finale tomorrow. He might use them all, <laughs> but that's, that's what they're there for. It. Yep. Ollie Osborne, the first to make it into the final tomorrow. Four and two winner over Matthew Sharpstein of Charlotte. And a 36 hole final coming up. Bobby Jones won the first U.S. Amateur title for Georgia Tech. Matt Kuchar won it. Andy Ogletree won it last year and Tyler Strafacci has a chance to win the U.S. Amateur title and represent Georgia Tech for the second straight year for the first time in the history of this championship. Georgia Tech has a chance to win back-to-back -back U.S. Amateur titles by two different players. Ollie Osborne of SMU will have something to say about that.